We begin on the afternoon of April 11th, 1990, along a hilly stretch of road near the small town of Pekin, Illinois. Uh, EMT Steve Thompson and his partner Mike Ersogovich were on their way to meet another ambulance crew for a dinner break. We were headed uh, southbound on Parkway Drive and uh, there's people coming home and, and going to work at about that time so there was a lot of a lot of heavy traffic. We saw a car going uh, northbound weaving uh, erratically. It looks like they're drunk or something I don't know. Well, those cars are going to hit the cars. After we passed it, I looked in my mirror and I saw it drifting back across the roadway. The car was going between 40 and 45 miles an hour, I'd say. We uh, turned on the red lights and siren to warn the oncoming traffic and traffic in the area that there was some danger approaching. Ten four, I do not have an officer available at this time. I was concerned for the other drivers on the road. It was kind of anger that somebody would be that drunk uh, going through rush hour traffic. EMT Tom Siren and his partner were also heading south on their way to meet the other medic unit. When I first saw the car, there was a guy running next to it. You know, I just figured he was trying to get back in his own car and it took off from him. He just started down the hill and picked up so much speed that he you know, he didn't even have a chance of catching it. Did you see anybody in that car? Man, you believe this person. I wasn't able to tell if it was a man or a woman. I just saw somebody slumped over the steering wheel. Okay, go ahead and turn around and chase him. We turned with lights and siren on, and we pretty much had most of the traffic stop in both lanes of the road. As we were proceeding after the car and reaching the city limits, the traffic uh, would be approaching highway speeds, 55, maybe 60 miles an hour. I knew we didn't get the car stopped before it hit the curb. It would probably run off the road and strike a tree. We hit the air horns several times to try to get her attention, try to get her to wake up and look over or something, but never could. The car came to a small grade and it looked as if it was slowing down quite a little bit. Okay, get ready to slow down. It went through my head, I go, you gotta stop the car. This this is what you gotta do, you gotta jump out. Or you gotta run after this car and stop it. It was moving a lot faster than I thought it was at the time I got out of the ambulance. And there was a point where I thought I was just going to have to stop and let it go. I was concerned about uh, my friend Tom. I felt compelled to, do, to help him in whatever way I could. Tom, there's a baby in the car. We had no idea up until that point that there was anyone else in a vehicle, especially a small child in a car seat. Be careful, we're going to throw it in the park on three. One, two, three. She was indeed uh, in an unconscious state. Once we saw the driver of the car, we knew it wasn't someone intoxicated. It looked like a medical problem. You can take a ride with me, huh? The child was looking around, had no idea what was going on, had no idea that uh, that he was in any kind of danger or that anything could happen to him. Mike uh, took care of the patient, uh, took her vital signs. 
We didn't have any idea it was wrong with her. You know, we thought she might have been diabetic and had a reaction. On the way to the hospital, she started coming around. She could tell me her name. That was all she could say. I asked her if she knew where she was going and where she'd been, and she couldn't answer those questions. 27-year-old Susan Fugit regained consciousness at the hospital, where she was referred to neurologist Mahasoop Shah for diagnostic tests. Close your eyes and touch your nose with this finger. And we did some testing on her, and when we did the EEG, we made a diagnosis on her that she was suffering from epilepsy. I felt fine that day. I didn't have any sign that I was going to have a blackout like that. The best thing that came out of all of this was finding out what was wrong with me, and getting the medication, and more than likely I don't have to worry about it happening again, as long as I do what the doctor tells me to do. Now, where's this go? That's his other hand. There. If something would have happened to Joshua, you know, when I blacked out, I, I would have hated myself. You know, Joshua's my life. Okay. Now, which piece should I put on there? You know, I just thank God that those ambulance drivers were there. I'm very grateful for what they did. I thought the risk was, was minimal to us to, uh, to possibly save uh, several people's lives. I'd probably go ahead and do it again and probably look, look back after it was all over and said that was stupid to do that again. But um, no doubt in my mind I'd do it again. Did you do it? Yeah.